Live from Madrid, Spain, it's theCUBE. Covering HPE Discover Madrid 2017. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Welcome back to Madrid, everyone. This is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. We're here, this is day two of HPE Discover 2017. My name is Dave Vellante, and I'm here with my co-host for the week, Peter Burris. Anna Pinzuk is here. She's the Senior Vice President and General Manager of HPE Point Next Group. That's right. That's Welcome right. back to theCUBE. Many Glad times to be here. Cube yes, alum, that's right. pre HPE, and that's now right. second time since. When did you start? In February? Yes, so, I know. It's been nine sure. months. I'm a veteran. Yeah, vet. you know? Great. How's the, <laughs> how's the gig going? You're hitting your groove swing. Yes. Looked great up on stage yesterday. Thank you so much. Yeah, I no. appreciate it. Yeah, I think we are. You know, uh, I came on board in February, and it's been like a, a run ever since. Uh, we launched a brand in February, so that's when I think yeah. when we when we sort of talked last. Um, and then since then, we've just launched another brand, which is HPE Green Lake for our flexible uh, consumption model stuff. Um, and we've been doing a lot of great things. We've been doing partnerships with folks. Uh, we've been, I've been going out to each one of the uh, regions, talking to different customers, so it's been going really well. Well, so Point Next has become a linchpin of HPE strategy. After the spin merges, things become more clear when when you talk about making hybrid IT simple, getting to the intelligent edge, services is now front and center. Meg talks about it, Antonio talks That's about right. it. Why is services so important and how do you see that scaling yeah. in the organization? So, you know, first of all, I mean, I, I definitely believe that the world is turning to be a services-led world and I tell folks that it's really two things. It's services-led and, and then advisory-led, really, so uh, advisory, in particular because our customers want to really undergo these new digital journeys, right? I was just on uh, stage talking to one of our customers, the Tottenham uh, Hotspurs, right? And they're redoing their whole stadium, right? And they're trying to increase uh, the interaction and the engagement that they have with fans, right? And so. Um, that's where services come in. And so we're really services led that way. And the second thing that's a phenomenon is really the, the cloud has really um, helped us you know, learn to want everything instantaneously, right? And to, and to want things when we need them and when we think we need them. Yeah. And so you know, a lot of services is really about enabling those experiences in a consumption model. And so that's the transformation I think that HPE is going, is going through, right? Not just being a product company, but really moving to being services led to deliver these digital experiences. Mm. Yeah. Well, one of the things that we've observed over the years uh, as folks who work with customers in thinking about their technology is that there's a co-mingling, a bringing together of the idea of invention. And one of the things that's most attractive to me about a services led or acknowledging the role of services is that really innovation is a two-part process. There's an invention, which is the engineering element, yes. and then there's the innovation, which is the social element, the change. And one of the beauties of taking a services as opposed to a product approach is that you end up focusing on the social change. That's right. You end up focusing on what does it mean to use this, apply it, make it happen, That's right. and it accelerates the innovation process. I'm wondering if, by having a more services approach, HP is able to look at this significant new range of problems that you're going to try to address, yes. but address them as a social innovation challenge as opposed to just getting product into market. Yeah, no, and that's absolutely right. You know, I'll, I'll give you another like cool example. You know, uh, we have a customer, Ux net -a -porte, right? And they're a, a, a digital sort of online um, experience provider, right? They support brands like uh, all the expensive luxury brands that we, lo we know and love, right? And they're trying to help stores innovate. Not, so let's say your um, Prada or Marni or Louis Vuitton, right? They're helping provide a social experience, right? To their luxury brand consumer, right? And being able to do that not just mirroring what you would get in a store, but really innovating in how do you engage with that kind of a consumer online. And so for example, uh, they allow you to shop online, but then they'll bring the product to you, it'll be all wrapped really nice, uh, they wait for you to try it on to make sure it's okay. And so that's an example of social innovation, right? N not just thinking about uh, how to provide product to enable a website, right? But how do you actually then help a customer innovate in that whole engagement it's, model? It's, yeah, not, well, social, it's innovation That's that right. is made possible 
by a whole lot of technology. That's right. Combined with simple ways of introducing change, not just to consumers, but also the people who are ultimately responsible for providing that service. That's right, that's right, that's exactly right. Is yeah. that one of the basis then for thinking about Point Next? Yeah, it is, because um, people ask me, you know, we've always done services, and a lot of our services were product attached services. You right. do support services, operational services, data center care, those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. um, and then we decided to sort of launch Point Next and the idea is that this is more than just you know, what we've traditionally done as uh, product attached, right? This is really coming at it from a completely different angle, which is recognizing that there is an element of social and management of change that comes through digital, right? And that's why we talk about advisory-led. Part of that advisory-led is really helping companies figure out what is that new phenomenon? You know, How do I actually shift the experience that I want to enable, and how do I bring social innovation with a set of partners too, because these experiences right. really require us to work not just with our own products, right, but with software providers, with and SIs your customers and customers' partners too. And our customers' partners as well. I mean, who the customer is is shifting as we put this together, right? Um, I'll give you an example. When we work with uh, automotive companies, we've got to think not just about, let's say, the, the car company and, and their connected car, but we also have to think about how the consumer of the car is going to interact with the IT environment in the car. And so. How the dealers are going to sell and it. How the dealers how are going to sell money, it. The how they're going to do predictive maintenance uh, exactly. on it, right? So you, you start to think not just about one experience, but all the, all the elements that come from that single experience. Well, we just had uh, Deloitte on, talking about retail experiences and transforming you know, brick and mortar yes. stores, and so that's a, a key part of it. So partnerships is also yes. something that's critical, because you, you can't do everything. That's right. right? So, but I want to come back to some of the invention piece. When, when you were up on stage talking about flexible consumption models, and, you know, cloud, back in, when we went into the downturn, it was kind of tap on the shoulder. Yeah. And then coming out of the downturn, it became a kick in the butt you know, yes. to a lot of you know, traditional uh, IT players. So you've had to respond to that. Yes. Um, and you have, you have flexible consumption models, uh, you know, pay as you go models. Right. So I started to make a list. Yes. Because you know, we've been talking all week about two ends of the spectrum. We've got sort of, we're here at HPE Discover, AWS reinvents going That's on right. this week. Completely different philosophies about what customers want and, and how to serve those customers. And so, You've got to a great degree mimic the cloud experience. That's um, right. And you, you can't do it 100%. At the same time, the cloud can't mimic what you guys can do. So yeah. I kind of wanted to go through a, a list and think about you know, where have you closed those gaps? Where do yeah. you still have you know, advantages for customers? So things like pay as you go, flexible capacity. You've done a lot of work there. Yeah. Uh, can you give us the update on that? Yeah. And, and, and what is the, is there, how big is that gap when you talk to customers? Yeah, so you know, first of all, I mean, it's interesting because when uh, some of our competitors talk about pay as you go, they start by talking about just like a leasing arrangement, mm -hmm. you know, and they say, okay, it's, it's a lease. And this is far beyond the lease, so I think I can eliminate quite a few of our competitors, not <laughs> cloud competitors, just yeah. by saying we've gone beyond that, mm -hmm. right? And we provide a full service. Right, so it's the hardware, the software, the data center care, the operational management, right? And then we turn that service into a pay-as-you-go model. So that's the first sort of innovation and differentiation. And we do that on-prem or in a hosted environment. That's the first thing. The second thing is that, you know, part of what we do is we help to manage that environment for the customer. So we, in our flexible capacity model, we over-provision in a sense, right? And right. we have a buffer, and we understand where the customer is going, how much their utilization is, and then we automatically sort of manage that whole thing for them, up or down, right? Depending on what happens. I think the third thing, which is part of the innovation, which is a little different, is we also, do the integration of, new, of other technologies into the offer. So um, yesterday I was talking about private backup as a service. I mean, there we've got the, the hardware, the software can be Commvault, let's say backup yeah, software, right? Uh, all the management associated with that, including the support that you need for that, offered in a, an outcome-based service. So what we're doing there is we're also innovating in the metering, right? No, what we're saying is, we're going to uh, really provide you an outcome, and that outcome is a successful backup, 
So you don't actually have to worry about the equipment, you don't have to worry about is it infrastructure as a service, you know, AWS, whatever. We're actually providing a full solution mm -hmm. in an outcome base. And I think that's a little bit of what differentiates us from maybe some of the solutions that are out there uh, from others. That said, you know, we, I view this um, as providing the right mix to our customers. So although, yes, you can say we're competing with the public cloud because you know, customers have choice, you know, at the same time, part of what we're trying to do also is bring those two together, which I think is unique for same, us. That makes more same philosophy, different approaches. Different approaches, and by the way, if you're customer-centric, then what you want to do is provide customer choice and do the right thing for the customer and to say, where does it make sense to be on the public cloud or in a private environment and optimize for the, the customer benefits that you're, you're going after. Well, I think it's fair to say that the world has learned a lot from what AWS has, has done Absolutely. and said, hey, we can take that and we can apply it to right. our customers' businesses on-prem on or in a hybrid right. environment. And by the way, AWS, you know, especially with our CTP, um, right. acquisition, you know, they've been a long-term AWS partner, and we're having conversations with a AWS that say, okay, if we're going to really focus on customers, and we're really customer-centric, then how do we work together, right? Not just AWS, but Microsoft and Google and others. How do we work together and look at where we can uh, optimize our solutions, right, to be able to do the right thing for the customer. So our clients are sick and tired here, and you say this, or us say this, but <laughs> we believe that where we're going is the cloud experience where your data demands. So That's right. the way we think about it, and I'm wondering if, if you would agree, is that the co first conversation we have with a customer is, what's the outcome, what data is required to serve that outcome, how are you going to package it up as a workload, and where do you naturally need to run that based on latency, other That's types right. of issues. Is that kind of how Point Next is working with customers yeah, as well? Yeah, absolutely, right? So um, we, we want to come in, customer in, right? So you want to be able to say, what is it that you're trying to do from an outcome? I described a backup outcome. Another outcome might be, I'm trying to uh, accelerate my ability to roll out new, you know, let's say, uh, agile, solutions, right, or microservices, you know, based applications, you know. So, we have that conversation with a customer. We then say, okay, for that kind of workload, what are your requirements? You know, what are you trying to do? Uh, we might also come in and, and actually, because sometimes what people think they do and what they actually do in their right. environment is different, right? So we can come in and say, okay, let me actually measure what you're doing and see what you're doing. And then, you know, bring that information back to them and then have a conversation about what to do with your workload and what makes sense, right? So it's a very, uh, I think it's a very close engagement with the customer. It's based on real data about what the customer is trying to do. And frankly, that was one of the reasons that we made the CTP acquisition as well, because it, it started to complement our portfolio. A lot of the capabilities that we had were very uh, robust, uh, in particular around private cloud, but just having the public cloud uh, angle there and, and, and sort of strengthening that piece was super important to be able to have that conversation and truly enable the right mix. Well, now that brings up the topic of multi-cloud, yes. which is kind of, you know, to use a sports analogy, it's jump ball. And it's, it's kind of a free-for-all, everybody wants that, that business. Um, yeah. I guess with the exception of some of the big cloud guys don't, aren't interested, but yeah. certainly well, Hewlett Packard. don't believe it, want to avoid it. Yeah, well, but that's the reality is there's going to be multiple clouds. We know right. this, um, yeah. particularly with SaaS. So a company like Hewlett Packard Enterprise obviously has to play that's in right. that space. So I wonder if you could talk about the strategy there, why you feel confident that HPE is in a good position. Yeah, well a couple things, you know, for, first of all, um, I think it's really good to be, we're somewhat independent, we're not totally independent because we've got a whole pro set of products, but we're somewhat independent in the sense that um, if we want to be truly hybrid and enable other public and private solutions, we want to be able to give customers choice in terms of the public uh, domains that they can work with. And so it's, you know, we're sort of in a great position as a, as a large provider and with the sort of the, the relationships that we have in the enterprise in particular with our customer base, right? To be a little bit of Switzerland and be able to say, okay, let's have that conversation about the right mix and enable these uh, multi-cloud solutions. That's the first thing. The second thing is, you know, we have relationships and great partnerships with many of these providers. So take Microsoft, right? Uh, we've got an Azure relationship, an Azure stack uh, opportunity. So we've got the ability, uh, and we, by the way, we do many of their applications as well, right? So we've got the ability to, 
to help have that conversation with our customers to say, okay, do you want to be on-prem or do you want to be in the cloud? Even, even with one provider and, and to do that. And so we have the opportunity to provide robust solutions even with one private and public provider. And then on top of that, I mean, we're, you know, we're, we've got a consultancy, right? So with our professional services, um, we want to be uh, responsive to our customers. We've got now uh, HPE One Sphere, right? And with mm -hmm. HPE One Sphere, uh, we can be data driven and actually provide our customers a view of their environment and help to be a little bit of that Switzerland to say, look, here's what would be best for you, right? And help to um, have workload mobility, you know, together with uh, with one sphere. So I think we'll, we're well positioned. I I tend to call it my stairway to heaven. You know, in a sense, we start out right. with, you know, at the bottom, you know, uh, talking about infrastructure and support, and we've got great relationships there with our customers. As I launch um, the flexible capacity offers, we're starting to deliver outcome-based solutions, right? When I bring in HTP, um, I mean CTP, we go up the stack and we now provide advisory and the consumption solutions. And with OneSphere, now we go up the stack just a little bit more and say, not only are we going to advise you and provide you those uh, executables, you know, with, with consumption models, but we now have capabilities that allow you to sort of optimally choose what's the right thing for you. So I think we're well positioned, by the way, with CTP, we've got sort of a managed sort of cloud sort of capability as well. We manage compliance and, and other elements. So we're able to have in our portfolio sort of value added services above and beyond that help with multi-cloud and making sure that customers can can be compliant, secure, um, and have the right experience on a multi-cloud environment. Yeah, I think a lot of people that don't know CTP don't understand how deep their expertise is. There are only a few hundred people. That's right. You know, if that, and, but they're rock stars. They're over and, 200 and, people, and, yeah, yeah. Serious thought leaders with like, right. real deep connections. I got to change subjects to the last, last topic area. As you know, theCUBE from day one uh, has always been a fan of having women in, on and promoting women yeah. in tech. We first met you at the Nita Borg Institute, uh, the Grace Hopper Conference. That's right. Um, Meg Whitman yes. um, is you know, obviously a woman leader yes. in tech, and she's leaving I know. HPE. We've got Meg and we got Ginny. And Ginny's you know, coming to the end, I don't know, you know, she's getting to the age where typically you know, uh, IBM retires at yeah. CEO. So you got two prominent women in tech now leave it, now maybe IBM will replace uh, uh, Ginny with a woman. Yes. HPE has chosen Antonio, great choice. Yeah. But uh, your thoughts on a leader like Meg, uh, obviously has done some great work. Yes. Uh, but we're losing one. I know. <laughs> what and do you so, feel about that? I mean, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm very conflicted, you yeah. know, if I've got to be honest, right? On one hand, uh, as I joined HPE, I had never worked for a female CEO, you know, so um, I've really enjoyed watching, you know, it's always great to have mentors and to have, mm. um, you know, people that are advocating for women, right? So I've been, I really enjoyed being part of Meg's organization. I'm really sorry to see her go. And she's an icon as well, right? Yeah. So she does a lot. Uh, in fact, this afternoon we're going to be doing a session for women just uh, here at the conference. Um, so, very sad to see her go. At the same time, I think we as women, and men, by the way, have a responsibility to build the next generation of leaders. And I think, you know, that's, that's where I focus my energy. And I, I know that I'm going to be sort of a, a, a high profile female, you know, mm -hmm. in the HPE environment. So, I feel that sense of responsibility, not just within HPE, but within the industry, to help to cultivate an environment that's, you know, uh, takes advantage of half of the population, right, and, and, and enables innovation um, through them as well. Um, so, I think we've got to get more women up there. I mean, I think part of it is, you know, really bringing up the next generation, and uh, frankly, this next generation, they don't have tolerance for, for wait, you know how it is, for waiting for things, whatever, and they feel like they, um, you know, they, they feel like they're super entitled to have the right and the choice. They are. Right? And they yeah. are, right? So, but you know, that's, um, I mean, that seems like a, like a, a, an easy thing to say, but in some sense, you know, we've, we come from a generation, many women as well, which have 
had challenges, in, especially in the, in the tech world, right, in terms of really breaking that glass ceiling. And I think we've got some amazing women and some amazing um, leaders as well. I'm part of the Anita Borg uh, right. Board of Trustees as well, and we were at Grace Hopper and we had um, Debbie Sterling, mm -hmm. you know. We had quite, I mean, you know, some really great uh, women that are coming up the ranks, that are CEOs, that are CTOs, right, that are really leading the way. And so, I'm very hopeful that, you know, the conversation, by the way, about women in tech is really, you know, prominent right now. Yep. Um, and that I think it'll open up opportunities for women to shine uh, going forward. And I think that should happen for HPE as well. In fact, um, right now it's me and then Archie, uh, uh, Deskus is the uh, CIO for right. for HPE. So we're trying to do our part, you know, yeah. to sort of uh, uh, make sure that there's other women in leadership as well. Well, you're a great example of a current and future leader. Thank really you appreciate so much. you coming yeah. on the cube, I appreciate Anna. it. Yeah. All right. Thank great you. Great to, to see you again. Great to see you. Great to see you. Thank All right. You so much. Keep it right there, everyone. This is the cube. We're live from HPE Discover Madrid. We'll be right back. <laughs>